There you go. I'm Di Pritchard. I'm Angry Anderson with the Rose Tattoo, and you're watching Mosh Can. What can we expect, Chief? What can they expect? Nothing but the best. That's it, mate. Simply the best. Sorted down memory lane. Well, I mean, you know, without blowing our trumpet overly hard, yeah. only sort of moderately hard, um, I don't think there's any, there's any better. Maybe there's, there's some that are as good, but I can't think of anyone better than what we do. Yeah, we go a long way back. Um, that was the early 80s. Mm. And then we were touring in America with um, Aerosmith. And um, I remember Stephen saying to me one night, he said, oh, there's, there's some young guys desperate to meet you. And, um, you know, we're, they're sort of mentoring them. Uh, we met these young guys, they were a glam band and um, at the time. And they were very, very, uh, well, very, very complimentary and they were very flattering in their praise, etc., etc. And they basically sort of said, we love what you do, we, we, we want to do that. You know, that's, we'd like to have that as a direction and an image. And, and, and we said, well, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll alienate you because it had for us in our own country. But it was what made us famous in Britain and Europe. And then, you know, later on in, in America as a cult, <coughs> we enjoyed great healthy cult status ever since. But, um, but they took it to commerciality and, uh, and made a wonderful success out of it. So there's always been a great mentoring relationship between us and them. So, um, Slash, whenever he comes to town, he either, wants, he either gets me to go and just sing with the band, or in this case, um, he wants the band to be able to come and play. So. I think I fit all the, all the appropriate things like don't trust managers and you know, don't have joint bank accounts with your wife. Or <laughs> Eat your greens. The sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Sit up straight, don't wear your fucking hat inside. The, the sort of things that a father says to a son. Because, you know, I, I've got to say, you could ask him about it, but I've always thought about him as a, you know, in a very affectionate way. I've always kind of felt, you know, he's, he's, he's a lot younger than I, and I've always felt very paternal towards him. Well, I, I like I like his passion. Yeah, I like him. The guy's integrity. He's, he's a rocker. He's, he's, there's no compromise with what he does. It's really cool. Yeah. Whereas these days, there's a lot of rock ba rock bands uh, that do, you know, without naming names. But he's, what he does is completely uncompromising. It's old school, and it's uh, and it's how it should be. We don't try and reinvent a wheel. Yeah. There was one for me. Was it was at Whiskey backstage, and uh, this is when I was over there with um, I was over there doing um, Blood from Stone, and we were at the Whiskey, and the Angels were playing. They were doing a ca uh, and Guns and Roses came. We all got up, myself and Axel and and um, uh, and Doc sang mm. some songs and. I remember Doc saying, do you know any Angel songs? And he goes, no, but I know a couple of roast I do. We ended up doing Bad Boy and Outlaw, which was fun because I, the Angels knew the songs and Slash got up and played. And we're sitting backstage and I looked up and I said, fuck, you know, I said, that, that's the Go-Go's or the, you know, the Belinda Carlisle. Mm -hmm. And, he, and, he's, and he's, he didn't even look up, he goes, dud fuck. <laughs> Right, I would I think, for me, probably Alice Cooper in 1977 at Festival Hall in Melbourne. That was, uh, that was really impressive for me. I was like 15. And I used to play ice hockey and uh, I sold my skates the next day and bought my first electric guitar. 
you know, so, someone said hard, someone, someone said to me the other day, you know, did you can you remember seeing Zeppelin at Kuyong? And I vague, I was tripping my fucking head off at Kuyong that day, and it was a stinking odd day. It was an unbelievable concert, just unbelievable. But anyway, having said that, I think I saw John Mellencamp here. The last time Elton John did a show here, I, I was here, and that, they were both outstanding. I think the most amazing concert I've ever seen would have to be between Carla Santana and Pink Floyd. And I think Floyd probably had the edge only because of the fucking... I just love Floyd's music. And, you know, their, their light show, when you see that the lights and the music are just almost like they're linked. Mm. They're the one thing, but they manifest themselves in two different uh, in two different aspects. I mean, that's that's quite a special thing. So I, I think probably the greatest thing I've ever seen and heard would, would be Floyd. Everything all they said was fantastic. No, but that day, Zeppelin were fantastic. And Jimmy Page, I don't, I, as I recall, Robert Plant wasn't on his top of his crank, but um, he, he was good. Mm. You know, he was still good. He sang the shit out of everything, but he wasn't. He seemed to be sort of disinterested and sort of like, mm, you know, like. But no, Jimmy no. Page and, and John Henry Bonham, they, the band, yeah. were fucking on fire. He seemed tired. They just seemed like they were just fucking. They were amazing. Smell it. Taste it. Man, it'd have to be whacking. Whacking is just like. There's nothing like whacking. Yeah, no. Whacking 2000, we did 2006, I did 2006 and 2007. 2007 was pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah, I'll go with that. Yeah, yeah, whacking's pretty amazing. That and Mutatol. Mutatol. We have to explain that it's a small club in a small yeah, this community. They, they country, it's, music a, it's a it's a country valley. It's right at the foot of um, this end of or that end, the Swiss Valley Swiss end Alps, yeah. of the Swiss Alps. Uh, Mutatal is a town in a valley, and at the opening of the valley, there's a, an industrial complex where they make all the Swiss family noise and Victor Knox or whatever yeah, stuff there. Yeah, nice. But and then you go further up the valley about another hour, an hour and a half or whatever, and there's this tiny little country town called Muntatal. And the, 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 the most amazing fans, there's about half a dozen uh, businessmen within the town. They own the hotel, they own the restaurants, they own this, that between them and they've swarmed a cup. They're just rock and roll nuts. Mm. And they've built a club and they invite their favourite bands. Mm. That's fantastic, it's amazing. And you go there and they just give you like a holiday for three or four or five days in their town. They pay for everything. You eat at their restaurants and they just, and all you got to do is play a couple yeah, of nights yeah. at the club. It's picture perfect because it's like a chocolate box town. It's like this, either side is like five kilometres worth of mountain. It's just like, yeah, like nothing you've ever seen. Nothing you've ever seen. We love Mutatal. We do, with a passion. We'll, yeah. we want to come back to Mutatal. Yeah. No. We may. We may, yeah, let's just see what happens. After this tour, we sort of like different things are happening. Um, yeah, we're all riding all the time. We're riding all the time, so. Yeah, yeah. We Any, do it anything. We love it. Yeah. But that's, the, that's the way we run. That's the way we operate, is that, you know, we've, we've produced, I mean, I suppose over 36 years, you would say, oh, we've underproduced albums, but you can't come up with a great album every year. And if, if you say you can, you're, you know, I don't know, you're just either a genius, you know, genius songwriters, or, you know, you're just trying to do the same album over and over and over again. I mean, if you want to do that, I mean, Quo made a living out of it, so did ACDC, so did the Stones, but, you know, it's, that's, we come, we come up with an album every now and again because that's when we come up with something we think's worthwhile recording. So we may, we may.